What is going on, guys? Why is it here? Coming in with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was a sort of midweek random matchup before our CWL weekend uh, against this uh, sort of farm clan, uh, Isabel Invaders. Obviously, the Isabel Invaders came with the, the victory. Uh, we were more sort of using this war, do a little uh, practicing on some styles of attacks we're not really used to. Obviously, uh, um, is what it is. Uh, so good job to Isabel Invaders. They, uh, their attacks were definitely uh, a little stronger than we had expected, but uh, nonetheless, fun war. Uh, the Isabel Invaders had a two or three extra 11s, I think, and no Town Hall 9s. Um, we had at least a few Town Hall 9s, I think three, 20, 20, and 30, yeah. Uh, Anywho, uh, I am bored. Uh, got about an hour before I got to go get ready for work. I'm just sitting around home. So thought I would jump in because we did have four 12v12 attacks uh, that I thought are interesting. This is obviously a newer town hall level to me. Um, so I've been watching a lot. Uh, our guys up top are really strong. Kind of nice seeing the different styles of attacks uh, at that town hall level. Uh, I really do like the state of the game right now uh, and where it's at because, you know, 12v12 is not impossible. Um, it is very, very tricky, though, and kind of just trickles down. Uh, I think uh, the balance of gameplay at the moment is uh, is really good. So apparently, play games has been updated. Get rid of that. Um, oh, my God. My task manager, what is going on here? So unprofessional. Take me a while to get back and swing things. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely trying to get uh, someone to help me out with some custom overlays as well. Uh, I would I do get a fair amount of free time on Friday nights, sometimes on Saturday mornings, depending on how my schedule goes. So I'm going to try and do a little streaming, just have some fun, hang out, watch some attacks, do some learning. So that's what I'm doing right now. So this is going to be a real quick video because I'm just going to really show these four attacks. Nothing too crazy, but uh, here's Damien going in on our number four. Uh, with a bitch attack, bitch attack with giants. So I've been noticing there's a slight variations of bitch. Um, it is obviously the uh, sort of spammy attack. Basically, you're just dropping a wall of giants here, get a little protection and get those skeletons spawned out. Um, and it's really good, I find, on these very boxy style bases where there's just compartment, compartment, compartment. Uh, you know, that siege machine gets right in there, blast down that inferno tower, blast down those walls. Get everything into the core. Get a few of the witches going on the outside. He does have these uh, two wizard towers on the outside, which pose a little bit of threat. Uh, but really, once he gets everything going in this core, he still has a jump spell for this back end. He's got a rage spell. Going to go down here in the core in a minute. I believe. See these witches doing the work on the outside, witches on the other side. The wizard towers really don't stand a chance. They're trying so, so hard to get rid of these uh, rid of these witches, but just not enough. Does use that raid spell on the back end. Has a jump spell still. I think he's going to let everything out of this compartment. There goes the jump. Uh, this hound does burst here in a second, so it poses a little bit of problems just because there are no air targeting troops in the core there other than a couple of those witches and the Grand Warden. Uh, Grand Warden just ignores them all together. See, everything's sort of wrapping up. He has way too many units. The Queen now is going to engage these pups and clean them up, get the bowlers out there. Still has some skellies doing work. A witch on this back end has his Queen ability intact at this point with really only two defenses remaining, so Damien absolutely crushes this base. Hits that queen ability for no good reason. Just because he can. That's a three star in the bag. Nice job, buddy. And next up, we got Daz going in on their number three. A uh, little bit different style of base. A uh, little bit different style of bitch. He brings a couple healers here. I thought it was interesting. Um, generally, I would have thought he, was, he would have dropped a healer on this side and a healer on this side. But you'll see he dropped both healers over there. Can zoom out a little bit more. Um, but same idea. Going to get that siege tank going in. Get the heroes going in. Huge clump of bowlers. Get that raid spell down. Really, he's going to have to get a poison down. Right now, over top the CC troops. Take care of that. Queen's going in. He's going to mop that stuff up. Bowlers in behind under the rage. Smacking down those wizard towers. You'll see on this base, 
Not a lot of splash damage on the outside. So especially with these two healers and this little group of bowlers and uh, and skellies and whatnot, these uh, I believe these witches on the on the other side end up getting taken down. Yeah, you can see a couple of them dying already. Uh, but the healers here are clutch for this attack because they keep this witch bowler unit going around the base and they sort of circle the bend. Um, you got still that stuff going in the core, but it is now just starting to fizzle out a little bit. Gets the wizard towers down, hits that queen ability. Uh, Bleed loses the queen here in a second. Yeah, he, he totally does. That cannon takes the queen down there. But she takes the cannon down just before she dies. Got that Grand Warden in there now by himself doing some work. Really just got to buy time. It's kind of nice. He ends up locking onto this elixir storage. Um, and delays himself from getting in range of these defenses. While he allows the bowlers and witches and more specifically the healers to sort of round the bend here. And they're going to come around the corner and just sort of mop the rest of this base up with just enough time to go. See the uh, the healers now lock onto the Grand Warden and keep it going just long enough to get a little bit of damage done there. And then they go back onto the Witchers and Bowlers. Skelly's getting in there, which is going to take a couple seconds to take down the Expo. Drops a couple Archers for fun. Down goes that uh, Grand Warden defensive structure. And that's a three in the bag for Daz. Nice job, man. All right, now we got Skull Cracker bringing a different attack here. These E drags, something I am not accustomed to whatsoever. It's definitely one of the new units since uh, since my retirement. Congratulations, you have earned a training manual. Go to the quest page and unlock its course. I don't understand. This is the new version of Blue Stacks, too, man. Man, it's going to take me a while to to get everything cleaned up and everything going. But anyways, uh, very similar, I guess, to what I'm used to seeing just out of normal drags. Um, I don't know what the huge difference. Oh, okay, so the attack hops, hop structures, which is kind of kind of interesting. But you're gonna see. So he just makes this line of dragons to tank, makes a line of balloons behind it. And what I thought was neat, he uses the blimp here. There it is at uh, ten o'clock. He's gonna bring it into this inferno tower compartment and really just help things out. Dragons are gonna sort of swoop down from the three o'clock to the six o'clock. He's got this other stuff. A drag comes in, takes care of that air defense. He gets a clone spell down, which I thought was nice for the balloons. Got a huge whack of balloons now going over these compartments with the rage. Down goes the expo. They're going to basically take care of that nine o'clock area. It still has all these e drags just blasting stuff in the core, taking stuff down as it goes. Queen's round in the bend at six o'clock here. Grand Warden in there helping protect those dragons as well. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. As always with dragons, they are so slow. So time is always of the essence when you're doing dragon attacks. But as you can see, it's a one lone Tesla tower up here at 12 o'clock. And it doesn't stand a chance with its sliver of health it has remaining. These four E-drags and the Grand Warden and Queen. See you later. That's a three in the bag for Skull. Mm -mm. Nice job. Kablam. Right, and my man Predator, this guy is a beast. He actually reminds me, I don't know, maybe I'm just living in the past, but yeah, he reminds me of a, an old friend, KNX. For uh, some of you veterans, you'll know who that is. And I don't say that, I say that just in the fact that, um, you know, he's one of the top guys. He really is our anchor. Um, really came through with us in week one CWL there and I uh, got high hopes for him here in week two especially with attacks like this this is sort of his specialty I find he likes to walk the queen in with, sometimes with the ward sometimes without um, depending on what she's going to face um, I was sort of online as he was talking through this attack and you're going to see a really nice job by this little queen warden and healer combo She's going to walk her way down here. He's going to break into this compartment at 6 o'clock. He's going to also send the king in for the other side, sort of meet everything in the core. And you're going to basically see that whole, um, this whole section of base get taken out just by the heroes and this little bit of a walk. Uh, really tricky with that Inferno Tower, obviously. He's going to have to make sure that that freeze goes down quickly, takes down the Inferno, freezes the queen for a moment there. Good job so far. Sends the siege in, sends in the king. And you're going to see the king kind of clean up down here with the queen. Everything's going to go to this jump spell on the core. <laughs> down goes that defensive queen. In goes the king. He's got bowlers in there as well out of the siege. Things are looking good. <clears throat> the only thing is baby D does do a little bit of damage to the king. It would have been nice if it had locked onto the queen here, but no big deal. 
Pup goes a hound. Clean up the pups. King's gonna do a little work in the core there. Finally, oh, excuse me. Finally, it goes down. But it doesn't really matter. Look at the, the amount of base that he's now taking out. This queen's going to finish up those pups, kill out that baby D, jump into this core compartment, get the town hall, the warden, get the eagle, take care of that uh, sweeper as well at the same time, and then he is going to start his lalo. He's basically taking out 50% of the base with this, and he's still got 20 balloons, a couple hounds, uh, and three hay spells. So in comes that first hound to lock onto this air defense here. A few balloons on each defense, same thing. Hound in at the uh, 12 o'clock air defense. Few more balloons on each defensive structure, and down come the hay spells. Hay spell one, hay spell two, and then he uses one for sort of this back end. See that queen warden still doing work in there, taking out defenses, clearing the way for all of these balloons. Just gonna let the balloons travel over, and then he's gonna drop the haste. There it is. Doesn't really matter if his queen's in there helping out, anyways. Kind of good timing on that because now all the balloons just uh, all converge on these last few defenses. Things are looking good. Keep in mind, he has not popped the warden ability yet either. Just minions and pops all over the base. Tons of balloons. Way more than enough to smash this thing. Nice job, Pred. Bam. Tree in the bag. All right. So I'm good. I just wanted to show a few of these 12 v 12s Like I said, kind of bored of work. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I make a video? I uh, did a little bit of streaming yesterday, playing some other games, just uh, just having some fun. I want to get a little activity going on the channel, whether it's Clash Clans, whether I'm playing Diablo 3, whether I'm playing some PUBG. But I did come to the conclusion, I cannot play first-person shooters with my middle finger in this splint. This is my W key, middle finger. So that's obviously not going to work. That's my move key. So I have to like hit W with one of my other fingers and it just throws my whole muscle memory off. It's a nightmare, but um, who knows? Uh, like I said, you know, I got my got my system going again, all, all looking good and want to bring uh, just whatever content it is, just kind of some daily stuff that I'm doing as, uh, as I now have a little bit more free time these days, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to do this. So last but not least, we are in War Prep 7, just under eight hours to go. Uh, with USA Adults, we had a random matchup with them in the middle of the week. Again, we're really using these uh, these random matchups as practice, uh, trying some new attacks, uh, using different base styles that we're unsure of in war. Uh, so we did lose by four stars, I think, uh, to them in our random midweek. Um, again, though, no dips. Uh, it was just a very, you know, friendly war on both sides. Uh, you know, so we are looking forward to this rematch, uh, which starts in eight hours. Hopefully, uh, I might be able to jump on do a little streaming tonight. We'll see how that goes. I got to go to work from about 12 to nine. So when I get home, it will be maybe a few hours in a war. It might be a good time to jump on and just kind of hang out, try and show you guys some stuff. So good luck, USA adults. Hopefully, uh, the Hive can come away with uh, win number two for CWL this season. Uh, until next time, guys, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. I'm out.